Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. Today we're going to be disassembling a WD-1600 AAJS hard drive. As you can see from the model number, this is a 160 gigabyte model. The date is uh, 2010. Sorry, I had to take the sticker off to remove one of the screws. I went ahead and did that so I didn't have to do it in the video. Already took the controller board off to see if there were screws under it, but it's nothing interesting. WD still uses a very similar chassis to this uh, to this day for their Blue Series drives. And these are decently reliable. I don't think I've ever had to disassemble a desktop WD Blue drive. So I suppose their reliability record is pretty good. But I've taken all the screws out, but I have not actually opened the drive yet. So let's do that now. It has a very tight seal. Okay, there we go. And uh, it looks like some dust got on the platter from when I was doing that. And uh, it's got a, looks like a scratch around the edge there. So that is probably our issue of why it will not read. If we look on the top here, we have a, it's a very thin, flat filter. That's interesting. Usually you see a thicker one. And we have, oh, so this pad just goes over the head, uh, or sorry, the magnets. I don't know why that would be there, but that's interesting, maybe for vibration purposes. But yeah, I've actually never seen a filter like this, so let me, I might just borrow that permanently. There we go. So yeah, it's constructed like a laptop drive filter. Has about the same volume of charcoal you'd see in a usual desktop drive size filter though, so really the size isn't much of an issue. Uh, another filter up here, that's typical. Then uh, this is only one platter, and oh, the top head, there is no top head. Only this bottom one actually makes platter contact. Now the platter is not a regular color all the way through. It has like these little scratches and uh, discolored zones. So I have a feeling that's the issue. Also, it's not a landing zone drive, but it has a defined ring around the inside near the spindle clamp. So that is either indicative of just a really obvious firmware loading zone or just a very significant head crash. Also the spindle clamp design is interesting. I wouldn't expect that on such a low-end drive. We have six screws. Usually you only see like three or one on a low-end drive. So uh, kudos to WD for actually making these last. So here uh, our voice coil is not very uh, tight. It's not a very concentrated area. It's wide but the winding itself doesn't have many layers. And um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, I'm just saying I've never seen that before. Also, again, oh, we don't have a top magnet. This is just a piece of metal. So, yeah, the only actual magnet is on the bottom there. So I guess that's to compensate for that. That is kind of a cheap move, but at least that magnet is decently sized unlike some drives. Let me pull out this rubber stopper. Oh, that's nice. It actually neatly comes out. And then I can get the load ramps out so that I can have a closer look at the platter. Why does this drive have like four different screw sizes? That's usually not a thing you see. It's typically two or three screw sizes. I'm intrigued to see what they've done with the spindle clamp here, because it's different than the uh, Caviar series of drives, which I'm used to from this era. They didn't have this extra, like, uh, conical section on the top. They just had the circular bit, and a conical spindle clamp is usually, is usually a thing you only see when there's one screw, and that screw would be in the middle. You pretty much never see that with screws around the edge. Oh, that's just the motor. Okay, that's interesting. That makes more sense, though. Oh. Well, that doesn't look good. 
So we've got a massive scratch there, and that was not my fault just now. That was uh, already there. Let me see if I can see any more irregularities. Okay, no, just the top side of the platter has this different colored bit. And uh, that's strange. I don't know why only the top side of the platter, which is not actually used by a head, would have something that looks like a, uh, a loading zone for firmware. I believe, okay, yeah, our head does just slide off. Pretty typical construction. The head itself doesn't look damaged. So, yeah, it was just a platter corruption issue. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, actually, one last thing, I'm noticing how rough the inside of this drive is. When I hold it up to the light, I think you can see it is not smooth. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you everyone for watching. As always, I have tons of hard drive content on the channel. That's kind of what I do, so if you're interested, go check that out. But that's it for this one, and see you next time.